Hello, everybody. Welcome to Art Budgeting 101. Uh, this is uh, basically how to deal with pricing with artists and do it at a not break your your. Uh, sorry, it's morning. Uh, <laughs> not, how to, not, not how to get art for your book without ending up in bankruptcy court. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Um, basically I have, a, a, a loose, uh, outline that we follow and we'll be happy to field questions throughout via the, uh, Twitch chat. Um, so we'll do some introductions, say a little about ourselves and then we'll get started. Um, my name is Jack Para. I'm artist alley coordinator for devil exposure. I'm a freelance illustrator. I've been published in uh, role-playing games, card games, uh, for instance, uh, Metal Magic and Lore. I did some artwork for um, Legends and Lies. And currently, I just finished uh, a trilogy of books, uh, kids' books, with cover art and spot illustrations called The uh, Rainy River Bees. It's uh, sci-fi and hockey. Like basically, hockey kids face off against aliens to save the world. You know, standard stuff. <laughs> ah, okay. Hi, I'm Lizanne Lake. I've been a full time freelance illustrator for over 30 years. I started in gaming art with Dragon Magazine back in the day and did most of the card games, worked for most of the companies. And right now I'm doing uh, Land of the Rising Sun for Britannia Games, where I do most of the art for that series. They do chivalry and sorcery. So take it away, Bradley. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brad McDevitt. Uh, I've been a gaming artist off and on even longer than Lisanne has <laughs> by a couple of years. I've done artwork for probably 40 or 50 different companies, everyone from Atlas Games working on Ars Machaga to Zeitgeist Games working on the relaunch of, what I don't remember, Dave Arneson's big uh, adventure series. Uh, I currently work mostly for Goodman Games uh, I have worked, uh, so I do a lot of artwork for the Dungeon Crawl Classics role playing game. Uh, in between that, I worked for postmortem games and more game companies than I can even remember anymore. Uh, I have a fair amount of experience as an art director, which is one of the reasons why Jack wanted me in on this. Uh, because I have worked on both ends, both sides of the fence. So I'm going to do what I can to offer my advice. Okay, that's that's about it, kids. Okay, so please do put your questions in the chat, everyone. Good morning. We're looking forward to your questions. And happy Let's... Halloween. Oh, yeah. Happy <laughs> Halloween, everyone. <laughs> that, that was Astrid who will be uh, facilitating questions from the Twitch channel to us. Mm -hmm. That's right. And there's information already in the chat about people's art. So you can feel free to click on those links and see more. While we're waiting for questions, is there anything you'd like to start discussing? Sure. Uh, so basically, uh, we'll, we'll start with the, uh, the outline I have a little bit here. Um, first of all, do, good, do make a good faith effort to pay your artists. We uh, definitely work better if we get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, uh, you know, our landlords and grocery stores really don't like us when we would say, We'll pay you as soon as we get paid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll, you'll get things on a more timely fashion. Well, that too, yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess a good way to start it is uh, 
with your project work uh, out how many illustrations you have and a budget to of what you can spend mm -hmm. is a good way to start. Bradley? Oh, um, I remember to this day a conversation I had with the cur then current art director of uh, FASA Corporation, Jim Nelson. And he was like, in general, you want to aim for at least one illustration of some sort, at least every three pages. You know, less than that, it can start looking kind of dry. More than that can start looking excessive and drive your art costs through the roof. And that was for a uh, role playing game or? Uh, for Battletech actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, well, that was, you know, that was for Shad, that was their general rule for Shadowrun, Battletech, all their uh, games. I first did those, yes. Um, well, there's something to be said about that. As a project manager or art director, you, the publisher, will have to decide how many pieces of specific art you want that is specific to your project and how many pieces of just basically generic art you want. Bradley has put up a link, many links to generic art, you can get at reasonable prices or free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're uh, stock art or, um, or uh, probably second rights art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second, um, or, yeah. So you I would want know. your cover to be specific, maybe scenes, important scenes with the characters if you had an adventure, the place, but you can fill it up with pictures of, say, it's a fantasy one, swords and some knights and some brigands. Mm -hmm. Whatever fits to your adventure, you might just find stock art and not need to commission them. Mm -hmm. um, the yeah. one link, uh, Will McAuslin's Outland, Outland Arts, um, has a lot of equipment style pieces that I actually uh, used recently for a book that I art directed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So Another way. Oh, go ahead. No, basically the uh, the artist has already created them, so they mm -hmm. can charge you a smaller fee because they don't have to create it just for that. Any so, artist has a stockpile of already created art, and if you see something you like, you can just ask the artist for second rights use. That's what it's called, and the artist nods at their head and gets a check. This is good, or PayPal, <laughs> <laughs> and PayPal in this day and age, <laughs> or something like it. <laughs> PayPal is our friend. Yes. <laughs> so it's a it takes the artist no time and mm -hmm. saves you money. <laughs> Massively, and you can save massive amounts of money. I know. Yeah. I try to keep my stock art budgeted. <laughs> I think my most expensive piece right now is like five ninety nine, and you can get possibly a full color cover. You know what could be used as a full color cover for six bucks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, as opposed to the eight hundred to eighteen hundred dollars you might have to spend put out otherwise. Mm -hmm. Might not be exactly what you want, but uh, for a savings of over ninety five percent. Well, think of it if you have a adventure or something, which is spaceships around a planet. You're going to find a better picture of spaceships around a planet than you can commission from somebody. Mm -hmm. And in, in general, you can do something like spend more on the cover and then get the stock mm -hmm. stuff for the interiors because the cover is going to bring people into your into your project, see your piece. So that's where you want to, that's a good place to put in your money. So you can balance where you need to spend a lot of money versus. Mm -hmm. Honestly, in this day and age, the cover in non-print media is becoming less important. And people are putting interiors all over the pages to attract people. Yeah, that could work too. Yeah, if you have a print media, the cover is very important if it's going in gaming stores and the like. Yeah, or if you're on a, uh, if it's on sale on a, a website of some sort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If it's yeah, on you sale, can, on, oh. Okay. Yeah, you can easily post the, the first like five pages, you know, of your book, you know, and make sure that that shows off that, 
hey, we have good art in this book also. Mm -hmm. So I guess like the, the counter to that would be then put your money into the important pieces. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. choose some key pieces that you want to uh, want to show your game and then use uh, stock art or second rights for a lot of the other art. Because a lot of the cost will be in, often a lot of the cost in the game will be the, determined by the number of pieces too. If you try to commission every single piece, your your uh, cost will go way up. That being said, if you're a first time publisher, you might be better off using one reliable artist to do the entire thing rather than a bunch of people because you're not sure you're going, they're all going to meet the deadlines and things. And also, I, you can get a better price for giving one artist a big project. Bradley? Yeah, and I was going to say, especially if you're a first timer, some mm -hmm. artists may just be like, well, I've got jobs for this, 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 and oh yeah, I, t I decided, I said I'd do artwork for this company, but I don't have time and you may risk getting blown off simply because you're not a big enough name to really have any effect on them. I know that sounds horribly cynical, but it has happened. Mm -hmm. and, and especially if you're a new, a new designer going with a newer artist who's reliable, but give them more time would help too. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially if you're giving them a lot of pieces, you got to give them a lot. <laughs> yeah, I've I've had a few cases where they expected to me to work on the entire book and then gave also gave me an insanely tight deadline. And I'm like, I can't do this to the quality that you want or that I expect of myself in that deadline. It just doesn't another work. way. Another way to cheapen your art costs is not ask for many rights. If you want to own the painting and have perpetual full use of it in every single product whatsoever, you're going to pay through the nose. If you want to have a painting and put it on the book and allow the artist to print in non-competing media nearly immediately, it's going to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. You're taking yeah, so away from <laughs> yeah, what uh, Lucien's describing is basically full rights. It's called, we'll give you rights to everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it will cost a lot more. First rights is, it's designed for that product for that length of time. Mm -hmm. It's for the life of product, yeah. yeah for and if you want to use it on something else, like uh, posters or another product, you deal with the artist again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Money. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have to, if you think you might want more rights than just first rights, well, you don't have to get full rights right off. You can just get first rights and then ask the, the artist later, well, uh, I want some rights for merchandising for t-shirts or, you mm -hmm. know, right. or I'm, I want to use it in a smaller supplement. You know? I'm generally comfortable with just, you know, telling the uh, client, if you want to use it for your advertising and such, that's fine. Yeah. You know, I think I figured that's I include that with first. Rate. I include advertising. Yeah. 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 It's I, kind of silly not to. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're just yeah, advertising yourself. Like, too. If it's yeah. a client I work with a lot, I let them do t shirts or something else with it too. You know, just. Yeah. And then as we were talking about earlier, second rights mm -hmm. means mm -hmm. artwork that we've already designed and already been commissioned for or been, done all the work for, and you're just paying us to use it, mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. to license it for your product. Mm -hmm. You know, as all of us have probably are well aware, the doing art is not the most profitable business in the whole what, model mm -hmm. in the whole wide world. So as I've commented to more than one client, it's like, I got to squeeze every penny I can out of my artwork. You know, anymore, most of my clients, I let them know, you know, unless you have, it's a real deal breaker, 
this will eventually will eventually be as clip art mm -hmm. you know and i usually give them like at least a year of exclusive use before i make it at all available and i also say like you know you commissioned the piece as far you know your right to use it is in perpetuity as far as i'm concerned but let me have the right to reuse it for clip art later later on down the line mm -hmm. And the majority of, our, of clients have no problem with that. Yeah, I end up doing things like, oh, an example, card paintings. They took the rights for the big companies for like six, eight years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Long since expired. I've sold so many of the tiny little card paintings as book covers, you wouldn't believe. Second right book covers. <laughs> they were two inches and everybody says, oh, that's a great painting. Yeah. It was <laughs> But it's non-competing too. Yeah, you can sell. Yeah. yeah, usually you know we'll do something in the in the contract for the first rights mm -hmm. that like we won't sell it to your direct competitor mm -hmm. within that too because that's only going to hurt us as well anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, if everybody has the same piece, neither is going to sell as well. Yeah. Well, especially on the lower on the smaller end of and the indie publishers they don't seem to have a, a a problem if oh you know i picked up your book a couple months ago and huh, we have we have the same art we work at it oh well we both we both saved money on our our production costs didn't we okay you know if you buy stock clip art or use stock clip art that's always the problem somebody yeah. else one of your competitors may have used the same thing yeah if you go direct to the artist and ask them for use, you'll get, you know, a price a little higher, not much higher, but. <laughs> I don't but think I've ever had any, I rarely have people contacting me directly about my stock art. Oh. They, they usually go through the guy, the guy that takes care of the publishing and it's just up a drive through RPG. So it's um, basically between them and drive through. Oh, I, I do it on Facebook. People ask to use it, mm. a specific piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, whichever, mm -hmm. whichever contacting way, you know, whatever way you're contacted. I'm anti-social. I prefer to let drive through do it. Ah, that's easier. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, you also have to give drive through their cut, but. Uh, ah. <laughs> It also means I don't have to put any effort into my stock art other than once a week, you know, I'll go up, da, 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 here you go, there's, a new, there's, there's this week's clip art critter and gone. Yeah. <laughs> also, your, and your PayPal keeps going. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Well, we have a question. If you oh. Sure. What are the differences, if any, in prices between art for a book, for a board game, and for a card in a card game? Well, yeah, there's differences because card games are tiny. So you're not gonna do your paintings. If you do them over 200, 250%, you're losing detail. A book is going to be a much bigger painting. Yeah. And tech correspondingly more time. So I've seen, uh, I can't, I just blanked on his name, but he does his uh, Magic the Gathering artwork literally like 10 times size because I've oh. seen him, I've seen him posed with some of his pictures. And it's like, that's like gallery print size. Yeah, Ken Meyer Jr. Yeah, but he's doing yeah. them for gallery. Yeah, well, I, right. no, th this was this was artwork for Magic the Gathering. Yes, but he's doing it double. He's doing it for Magic, but he knows he can sell prints afterwards. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, like I uh, a few years ago when I went to a LuxCon, there were a lot of Magic artists there with the with the originals for the pieces, and a lot of them did them like eight by 10, 11 by fourteen because they were actual oil paintings and they could mm -hmm. sell they mm -hmm. could sell the physical painting afterwards oh um, yeah, yeah. I, which is, Lord, no, 
uh, when I worked on the Middle Earth game, those, those paintings are a little larger because you can sell them. The Tolkien estate allowed us to paint mm. scenes from Middle Earth, but it had to be in a certain ratio. So the race, so certain ratios are rather large in some cases. Mm -hmm. If they have a resale value, they tend to be larger. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you know you're going to be able to move the original, you want it large enough to, to attract collector's attention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is uh, another thing to, to bring up. When you get first rights or even full rights for a, a piece, you're not getting rights to the original, the, to the physical original. That's That has to be purchased separately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're giving you uh, use, of, use of the image. Yeah, we were drifting away from the question. Yeah. When you do when you do a card painting, the card manufacturer usually has a set price for the card, and will tell you my cards are fifty dollars, four hundred dollars, whatever, you know, depending on how big the company is. This is what uh, you get per card. <laughs> last time and, I heard, Wizards of the Coast was paying like twelve hundred dollars a uh, card. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and that was several years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it is, what their rates are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if uh, if you're a, if you're a, a new designer and you're making a, a card game, unfortunately, it's it's one of the easier for mechanics. Don't do it. But, Don't but do it's it. very expensive <laughs> for okay. for art. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you're going to need a lot of stock art and uh, and such. I mean, I. Dep depending on how small it is, I'll, I'll charge more towards like my interior price for a full color card art if it's small enough. And board games, you basically want one person doing all the art if you mm -hmm. can help it. I did yeah. one and I had to talk the publisher into doing uh, black and whites. It was the Salem Witch Trials Affliction. Mm. And they were all, and I talked him into doing just black and whites for most of the art. They were color pieces. And in the style of the woodcuts of the time, Ooh, and cool. it's actually being carried in this. It one, it's like really popular. It's the most popular game, and it's being carried in the Salem Witch Trials Museum. Um, <laughs> okay, there's no witches in the game. It's just townsfolk accusing each other of being witches. <laughs> which is another way to keep your price down by doing all black and whites. Mm -hmm. Black especially, and whites are fast, <laughs> yeah, especially, and especially for a card game, which requires numerous pieces. Yeah, so I did black and whites, and I did some color pieces of the judges and the tokens and things. You also have tokens in a board game. You have a board, which you may want colored, or you may be able to color yourself with graphics. But mm -hmm. keep the number of artists down. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe in a card game, if you have a ton of pieces, you might want a few artists because, you know, it's just a lot of pieces to cover. But I wouldn't go too many, especially if you don't have a relationship with them yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but in regards to the pricing difference, I guess really it's, it's to say there isn't as much of a difference in the price so much as the size of the art. Like the size of the art really determines more the price than than what type of product it is. Right. I agree. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the detail of the art. And the detail of the art. Mm -hmm. If you want 10 people in a bar scene having a fight, it's going to be more expensive than one night standing on a hillside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we talked about this last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the level of detail in the piece will bring it down, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And things like card games where you need multiple pieces, well, they're small pictures, so you're probably not going to want tons of elements in each picture. You're probably going to want more simple, simple pictures because if you have too much in there, it's not going to read any. Mm -hmm. um, That's probably why a lot of the uh, early magic artists loved it because a lot of them were just land, so it's like paint a swamp, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. paint a forest, or mm -hmm. paint paint a. Uh, Paint an elf in an action pose with a just a green background. Yeah, they were getting fifty dollars a card too. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on a Legend Five Rings, the very first ones, and it was strictly royalties because at that wow. time, Alderac mm -hmm. Entertainment didn't have any 
didn't wasn't making enough money to actually pay the artists so they're just like would you be willing to do these on a royalty basis brad you which know, is something you can you can ask an artist yeah. they, they, they might say no or they might uh depending on the artist they might accept the smaller fee with royalties well i did i was already doing a lot of work for them oh, right. and it was kind of like a hey you're one of my main clients right now the worst thing that's going to happen is i'm going to waste a few hours you know yeah you know you know when 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 you're at a kind of like a stopping point in your career at the time you have time to do something like that <laughs> yeah but card games right now are not a good idea no <laughs> Do not do card games. <laughs> no. Especially not tr and trying some through the collectible card game crowd. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, with yeah, with card games, I definitely would say rather than collectible, do a completely included card game, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then then you can release expansions for it. But it counts as a board game, nearly. Then yeah, the card. Yeah. I don't know what was the last successful. Uh, collectible guard came CCG to come out. UEO maybe? Dang. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, basically, unless you're Magic or Pokemon, the CCG, you know, market has pretty much dried up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or like, or the people who play those games tend to play a lot of those games, you know? <laughs> Or consider with with COVID, you have to have games. COVID is still around, mm -hmm. so you have to have games that don't take twelve people sitting around a table to play. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions, Astrid? Uh, at the moment, so folks okay. don't cry. No, no, okay. I see people in here ask some questions. Oh, we just got one. Yay. Do rights change when dealing with international clients? How does it affect prices? Rights get sketchy with international clients. Like I said, I do a lot of my work for British clients who technically, uh, there's a thing, they do not have to pay overseas people unless you sell your debt to an English person. Then they can get thrown in bankruptcy court. <laughs> There is no agreement. And British art is slightly different than American art. Hmm. So it has slightly oh, different sure. requirements. For example, I'll give you, for example, an American book cover, the heroes facing front in a British or European book cover. You don't want to see the hero's face. They go into atmospherics. The person wants to put themselves into the picture. Hmm. Hmm. Did not know that. So a British... British and European sensibilities are slightly different than American sensibilities. And I work well with British publishers, too. Huh. I did not know that. But the rights get a little sketchy, but usually there's common ground. Yeah, yeah and I guess, I guess if you agree on something and mm -hmm. set a contract ahead of time. Mm-hmm. That well, contract, contracts with international are a little difficult because the contract law for all the countries are radically different. For example, with Japan, you can't do anything except work for hire all rights. There is no concept of the individual owning their art product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so the company owns it. So we have no common ground with Japan. You can work for them, but only under giving them the entirety of the art. Mm. Yeah, which I'm not a fan of. You know, Nobody's a fan of it, but if people pay you, it's all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if the fee is high enough. Mm -hmm. Defe definitely not in a budget. Yeah, with most of the other countries... Uh, first right printing for life of product is fine with advertising rights. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a, I had someone at a con once 
who's been publishing a couple games, offer me like $65 for three spot illustrations and it was work for hire. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. And I'm like, uh, no, mm. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> yeah. If it, if it was just, you know, first rights, maybe I'd consider it with a new client if they were simple enough, but. No, that, that's way too much work for way too little pay and li- little after, after li- way too little aftermarket. Mm-hmm. No aftermarket. No, after- yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, aftermarket for you folks means we can sell the painting again and nod our head and get some money for it. Or stock art. Stock art, <laughs> second rights. <laughs> so. <clears throat> I think another good way to uh, save money as an art, as a art director is hire one person to do the entire thing or two people and give them a set price for the project with mm. the amount of work they're to do. You have a budget. You know you have uh, $800 for the small project. You can hire two artists, 600, 200, 400, 400, and give them a minimal amount of work. I'm assuming it's something like a module or something. Mm-hmm. You know, and this person's doing the cover and several pieces, and this person's doing the other pieces. You might have an artist who's good at doing equipment or landscapes. You might have an artist who's good at doing portraits and monsters. You want to split the work to their strengths. Yeah, which is a good point. That's another way to uh, save costs with an artist is if you go to their strengths, mm-hmm. it's going to take them less time, so they'll charge a smaller fee. If you ask them to do something really complicated that they've never done before, doesn't mean they can't do it, but it's going to have a little bit of – it's going to take them longer because they need to research. and mm-hmm. learn, there's, they're, they're having to overcome the learning curve. Oh, hey, I did think want to mention – Another way to save on your art budget is careful use of graphic design. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I did uh, artwork, the graphic design for a uh, game called New Gods of Mankind several years ago. And I only had like, you know, my hourly rate plus like $600 to pay for the, all the artwork. So what I did was I did illustrated headers and footers and then a repeating motif of like these little like kind of like headshots of uh, different deities that we could print on every page or at least every uh, chapter header. And that basically created artwork for every page, which really reduces your need for artwork otherwise. And then I could, then I was able to just take the, uh, spend the rest of the, bu- spend the rest of the budget on essentially spot illos and get a good number of spot illos for my $600. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. cause I, I w- we were only paying like $25 a piece. This was like 10, 10 or 12 years ago where, you know, prices were really, really low at the time. So I was able to get, was that 25 times by 600? That's what, 20, what, 24 illustrations? That's good. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, it was only 140 page book. So that was, that was a decent coverage of uh, original artwork. But if you have margins around your text, around Mm -hmm. the page, it looks like you have art. But you exactly. don't. Yeah, beautiful margin covering most of the pages. <laughs> well, I just had top and bottom, but still, mm-hmm. I know White Wolf uh, used to do that trick for a lot of their. Like, uh, if you look in uh, Wraith the Oblivion, for at least first edition, they had a border around every page. Mm-hmm. So that's one way to uh, save money. You know, hire you know, commission a header footer combination that kind of also helps visually reinforce the theme of the game on every page. Also the sneaky trick. If you have a spot illustration or an illustration you've hired, you can Mm -hmm. blow it up and put the text on top of it. Oh, is it kind of like a watermark? 
Yeah, and no, as a peep, as a you use the illustration hole, and mm-hmm. then use it as a backdrop for text. And people may not even realize it's been repeated. Mm, yeah. I, oh, I think oh, I use like a faded backdrop type. Yeah, here. a faded background. So it counts okay. as a piece of art. If you can you can use a piece twice. <laughs> yeah, I actually did something like that. I had like these this really faded runic type behind all the text on each page. Mm-hmm. You know, like 10%. So it didn't re- it was not high enough contrast to interfere with reading the normal text or anything but it gave kind of like a that feeling yeah. to every page and counts as art mm-hmm. one per three page or <laughs> yeah so mm-hmm. you're trying to create visual interest you're not trying to buy one piece for every three pages <laughs> yeah that, that jim that was just kind of like a this that's is a something good, to aim for that's a good amount i think the least would be one every six pages yeah yeah and you should have margins and other things if you do that something to make every page interesting to look at in Mm -hmm. or almost every page interesting to look at in some fashion Mm -hmm. if you have a lot of charts you may just want a spot on it or a margin Mm -hmm. yeah go ahead sorry Charts are not going to be looked at except when you need them and people aren't dwelling over them for the illustration. Right, yeah. Like if you look in a lot of the old Battletech books, um, sometimes they have pages and pages and pages of charts. But yeah, there's only, there'll be like one or two tiny spadillos every couple pages just to break up the charts. Mm -hmm. But they don't really worry about artwork otherwise for those, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's where you should use your uh, second rights, stock art pieces, or even a repeat piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because nobody's going to, nobody's really buying it, looking at that section of the book for Mm -hmm. the artwork. That's the very utilitarian portion of the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, D&D with their spell lists, they had Mm -hmm. very little art in the spell lists. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speaking of uh, White Wolf, I have uh, one of the the new the new uh, World of Darkness Mage book, and there's like 60, 70 pages of how to make your own spells and spells, like just charts and charts and charts and charts. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, that's not something you read through; that's something you reference. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But that, yeah, no art needed on those pages. Yeah. yeah, those writing is artwork enough as it by itself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, look what consider where you need art. Mm-hmm. That's true. You can and you can you know choose the more important places first, and if you have some budget towards the end, maybe think about adding a few more pieces in. But, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, you definitely want some pieces to have to show the unique flavor of your board game or a book or mm-hmm. adventure or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that unfortunately is one where you're usually actually going to have to commission it. You can't use clip art for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Not unless you get very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and it's good to just, you know, sit down with your project and plan where you should have mm-hmm. PR and where you should and, and how it, big. And how big. <laughs> yeah. You and might want... Go ahead. Sir. Right. I was going to say, and you, regardless of how tiny how tiny your art budget is, you probably want at least a few pieces that are at least like half pagers to kind of showcase. And I know, especially with the saddle stitch books, I always try to make put artwork in brick that that half page point, so that if somebody's at the store and they pick it up and they flip it up, it's going to it's naturally open. open yeah, so there's some artwork right there on the first page, first spread that they're going to actually be looking at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if, you, if you're already in touch with an artist that you want to work on your project, it doesn't hurt to ask them where they think the important pieces are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where they think you should have a 
where, where is more important to have a key piece. Mm -hmm. I get, honestly, I get sent adventures. And then I say, okay, he says, you have this many illustrations. And I say, you need this, 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 and this. <laughs> yep. right. right down the line. You have to illustrate all these things for your adventure. <laughs> And he's like, I would like this person illustrated too. Okay, you know, yeah. work that in. <laughs> you have to illustrate the key people and the monster and, and the adversaries and the plate. Yeah. And we'll work with you to, mm -hmm. with what we can what we can do within your budget. Yes, mm -hmm. to get everything in there. <laughs> and often artists will give you a discount for, for multiple pieces. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more questions, Ashley? Yeah. Around what percentage of your total budget should you dedicate to art? Well, Bradley would know better. <laughs> um, depends on whether you're you as the writer are the publisher or whether you're commissioning everything, because if you're hiring someone else to also do the writing and stuff like that, you know, you have to spread out the budget that much further. Whereas if I'm writing the project and publishing it, I can say, well, I'll make money afterward so I can spend that much more on the artwork, if that makes any sense. Because I, I work for a lot of people where they're basically a one-man show. Mm -hmm. It yeah. depends on yeah. If you, if you're uh, making the product yourself, you don't necessarily aren't necessarily paying yourself. I right. have something to say about that. The publishing course costs are hard and fixed; they're non-negotiable. Yeah, your okay. your printer. If you're actually getting a print run, that is a hard cost. Period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, which you need to investigate your lightning source prices or Lulu prices, or actually, if you're actually doing an actual print run, you know, you know, publishers are not going to give you a, or printers are not going to give you a discount unless you happen to, you know, stumble on someone. Like I used to work at a game designer's workshop and our printer actually gave us huge discounts simply because they liked my boss. <laughs> they, were, they were friends, so they gave them a huge discount, as well, but also as long as we had artwork, you know, of the stuff ready to print by X. And sometimes X was like 6.30 in the morning on Thursday, June 23rd, because they knew that they were going to have some dead time otherwise. Wow. <laughs> It's still good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So usually, you know, your top budget too. You know, I have this much money to spend on this project. Oh, sorry. So you have to subtract the publisher and see what you have left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, basically, it's kind of subjective what percentage you spend on your art. Printer. Spend yeah. <laughs> It depends on printing costs and your mm -hmm. other costs mm -hmm. and how much art you need for the project. It's really, I don't think there's really a, a set percentage. No, it's, there, there's too many variables. Mm -hmm. But I would say, I would say if you had to take a ballpark, you should probably plan on at least, emphasis, at least 30% of your budget will, will probably have to go to artwork. Mm -hmm. Depending on you get how much artwork you're using, you know the cost of the artist you're using, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and God forbid you're putting it up on Kickstarter. Don't make the stretch goals involve art unless you a warn the artist ahead of time, and b have much, much, much more money on your stretch goal than you are going to spend on that project. <laughs> Yeah, uh, speaking of Kickstarter, like I think a, a good reward with art versus Kickstarter 
is like a limited edition print. Mm -hmm. Like something that's already been created, but you can get a, like a really nice high quality archival print or just a nice print in general. Mm -hmm. Stretch gold in that or as a reward. My publisher has gone to STL files mm. of my paintings. It's cool. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> So I have figurines in my art. <laughs> so I said, can I do this? And I said, yeah, I get the figurines. And gets my <laughs> I want this for my trophy shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting one of my favorite paintings, a figurine of that. So I'm happy. That's, that would definitely be something I would want. Mm -hmm. would want a, the, an actual album. Yeah, but STL files are very popular stretch mm -hmm. And don't involve printing costs or publishing deadlines or writing. Yeah, yeah. Because that is literally just sending them a document. Mm hmm. You send them, and here's your Dropbox with the files in it. Yeah. <laughs> we have some other questions. Let me take a look. Nope. I love. Keep them coming. I know you have more questions because the brains of the people on this panel. Oh, well, brains in the morning. <laughs> no, They're there. They just take some extra time to access them. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. This, is how, this is Halloween. The only brains I'm concerned with are like. Uh... <laughs> You're hiring an artist. We are all artists here. Give the artist some free reign. Don't sit there and do a page and a half description of something because the artist may not feel comfortable doing it or may quote you a much, much, much higher price. You know. And that's, so, not even, that's not even by choice. I mean, it's a time is money situation. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you say you're willing to pay me $150, but I look at it and it's like, it's going to take me 20 hours to do this illustration. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna back out. There was a, yeah. there was one time uh, I was kind of excited to work on this project until the guy sent me the job, and it was going to be like forty dollars for a half page illustration, which was already kind of like that's at the extreme lower end of what I'm willing to to accept as payment, and it had he sent fifteen pages of internet links that I was supposed to go through and ref for reference for this one illustration. It's like 50, it's going to take me, take me four hours just to go through all these internet links. Mm -hmm. So I'm already down to $10 an hour. And that's before I even start doing any preliminary, any sketches. So I basically, I just told the guys, I'm, I'm not doing this job. I'm sorry. I'm out. I'm out. Be reasonable. Send your artist a manuscript or uh, a very, very short detailed uh, description. And only if it's a fairly short manuscript, because I once did a, jo did a job for a guy and, you know, you notice I'm not using any names. He sent me the entire manuscript for a 450 page book and told me, just read through the entire book and find, you know, maybe 12 illustrations that you want to do. Mm. A 450 page book. Well, yeah, what cover all... artists usually read the book? What's that? I'm um, sorry? What cover artists usually read the book? Yeah, I mean, I enjoy reading the book, but especially if you're on a deadline. Um, yeah, maybe send me, it, it's fine if you want to send me the whole thing, but highlight parts that I should read first for the illustration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't have minded that, but no, he wanted me to read the entire book and then decide what I wanted to draw. And I'm like, I don't have the time or energy to read this much just for you know, just for you. I've got other clients I got to be working for too. Yeah, I mean, if you want, if you want, if you want to wait a month before uh, before I start doing anything, <laughs> work in between. Well, it probably wouldn't take me a month to read 
On the other hand, if you have like literally a six month deadline, Bradley's ma reading the manuscript doesn't sound so ominous. That doesn't sound so bad, but this guy wanted his stuff turned around fast anyhow. Oh, uh, no. Want it around fast. You tell me directly what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want it fast. You tell me what to draw so that I can get to work right now. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, like the uh, the kids' books I did the illustrations for, he sent me the full book for all three of them. Um, but there were kids' books, so there were light reads and not super long. Um, but he also already decided where he wanted each illustration. So as I'm reading through it, I can I'm you know thinking about those illustrations, mm -hmm. and, and I don't have to read the whole thing before I start. Yeah, you you could basically skim most of the manuscript. I take notes. When I'm doing book covers, you have, I know I'm going to put character X on the cover. So I start writing a page with every bit of description of character X. Right. Yeah. Well, old fashioned writing. I, you can put it on a computer now. But you know, if you have some idea of what you're going to draw, you can skim the entire book for the pertinent pieces. Mm -hmm. the place, the monster, the person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you're going to do. Jack had a bunch of aliens. He could skim the yeah. book descriptions of the aliens. <laughs> and what, uh, what I did actually with those books is uh, he sent me them as PDFs. So I just went through the PDF to find the spots and I just bookmarked all my descriptions. Mm -hmm. That makes so sense. I just keep going back and going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, know what you want is a big thing. <laughs> you have, have any questions? questions? Yeah. Is using art released under Creative Commons a good investment? Um, I actually don't, dealt with this just recently with the last artwork I did. The problem with the Creative Commons license is it can get very hinky, especially if you're getting stuff off the internet, because some people, and we, I ran into this a lot, uh, some people have gone through and if they digitized like an old piece of artwork, and we were looking, we were literally using pieces of artwork hundreds of years old, like stuff from the Renaissance and uh, Elizabethan era, but because they had the digitized, they had digitized their, they were able to claim the copyright for that artwork. So even though the artist has been dead in some cases like 500 years, you were still risking running a foul of copyright laws. So yeah, be very careful when you're reading Creative Commons uh, licenses to make sure that it actually does say all commercial use allowed. So with Creative Commons, the uh, the type, the details of the license varies from piece to piece. Yeah, it was it was another nightmare because, you know, we're you know because, you know, trying to stretch the art budget. You know, we were trying to get pictures of like landscapes, old portraits. You know, like a picture of Queen Elizabeth. Well, mm -hmm. that let's face it, that artist is not going to come after you in court. But the person who digitized that photograph, that old painting of her, now officially owns the digital and printing rights to that artwork. So we couldn't use it without running afoul of the law. Mm. It was, I mean, the, the publisher literally had to sit down with his lawyer and go through the entire, all our art selections you know, and all the notations to make sure which ones were safe or not. Wow. <laughs> it was, it so, was a major pain in the ass. So, I mean, I guess it's not out of, it's okay to look at them, but make sure you read the fine print. It would have yeah. been faster to repaint a little painting of Queen Elizabeth. Some of them, yeah. <laughs> but um, that's, one, that's one thing, uh, the one openclipart.org that I posted a link to is wonderful because its license is like it's up on the internet we're making 
we make no claims of, you know, if it's at our website, it's free for you to use, to modify however you have to. Boom. End of story. Nice. <laughs> yes. Anything else, folks? Any other questions? No. Okay. Um, What's your outline say? <laughs> well, what, uh, what, what did the two of you think about uh, Kickstarter projects as a way to save on art? Uh, like getting paid ahead of time or afterwards? I, I do Kickstarter, but I get paid whether yeah. the project funds or not. If the project funds, I tend to get more work. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's... <laughs> Yeah, I make sure that I'm going to get paid whether the Kickstarter funds or not also. And that's one of the reasons why I pimp out my artwork, my uh, the projects as much as possible, because I figure if, like, if somebody sees that, oh, Brad is involved in this Kickstarter, oh, I think I'll help fund it. Mm -hmm. That's that much closer to getting it, A, getting it funded, B, the company staying in business and probably remembering hey brad kind of went you know put a little bit of extra effort into letting everyone know that my stuff was out there yeah when the kickstarter starts pieces of mine will go up and then i promote the kickstarter and my friends say oh i'm going to fund this kickstarter mm -hmm. because you're in it you know exactly yeah i'll fund anything you're in okay good <laughs> <laughs> I like having those people. <laughs> oh, man. Was, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm going to try to become friends with all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, the way that I've worked with Kickstarter reports, they pay me for a certain, a piece or a certain amount of pieces in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then if it funds, I get hired to do more pieces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that, that, that's usually how it ends up working out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's why that's a way to not spend the money up front until you have some budget for it or to awesome. generate more budget. Yeah. yeah. Just commission a couple of pieces so the people, so the potential backers have an idea what the artwork is going to look like. Mm -hmm. you don't have to have all the artwork, just enough to kind of tease them. Yeah. And then when it funds, you say, go to work. And you promise we will have this product to you in a year or a year and a half, and we'll have a PDF to you faster and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, that, that's one thing I'm still having to get used to, you know, shifting over to the Kickstarter model as opposed to the old distributor model mm -hmm. of, well, and you're probably familiar with this, Lisa, and, uh, you know, it's like, okay, we, you know, the print deadline is blank. You have absolutely have to have this yes. artwork to us by this date or dead. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I'm still getting used to the, oh, it'll get out sometime in the next year or so. Yeah. It's like, oh, is that out yet? Oh, we're a third of the way done. What? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember one job I did for Fasten that I was running horribly late on. I, and it was a completely drop the ball case on my part, but I ended up FedExing the la my last piece of art to them overnight. And I called real early the following morning and John Bridegroom was like, oh yeah, we got, I got it about 20 minutes ago. It's already slapped through and, uh, the manuscript mm -hmm. that went out is uh, heading over to the, the printing part place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm like, oh, that was cutting it too close. Yeah. Not, not always mean, reliable, those overnight shippers. <laughs> well, this was FedEx, so. FedEx is um, good, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I used FedEx or UPS mm -hmm. exclusively after... Uh, the post office actually lost some of my artwork for GDW before I would, when I was still freel just freelancing for them. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> we didn't Luckily, get it. I, 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, uh, we'll, at least me and Bradley are both on Discord. I'm on Facebook. And I'm on Facebook. And on I'm on Facebook, Facebook and most of the so various social medias. Mm -hmm. so if you want to ask us anything, um, all our websites are posted in the chat. And uh, you can check up more of our work there. So I hope thank you all learned something. <laughs> and thank you.